Hey guys, this is just a short video. Um, one of the quick lessons from Nuke 606, which I'm currently developing. Uh, it's gonna be a couple hours long, the class. So uh, yeah, it will be a pretty dense class, but uh, this is just a snippet that maybe people would find interesting. It's not directly compositing related. It's more just a general visual effects kind of thinking about uh, shots and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, this is the video. All right, guys, so we're gonna start the class with um, just my general process of how I planned out this visual effects shot. Um, so this is not completely directly compositing related. Uh, so we're gonna look at Blender and just exactly kind of my general workflow for kind of approaching some, uh, like basically a blank slate. And I know that some people will be wondering why is this part of a compositing class, but I'd rather over deliver on the information. And I think that some people will will just, uh, especially if you're doing your own projects, will have a have an interest of, you know, how can we think about approaching a shot that basically doesn't exist? You know, how do we design something uh, that just uh, hasn't been started? So I'm gonna explain my general kind of workflow for how I designed this shot, how I came up with it, and uh, yeah. So generally when I was starting this shot, uh, I had a, a rough idea of, okay, I wanna do some kind of laser shooting a missile. And that was basically the premise. I was actually gonna start it as a YouTube tutorial, but uh, it kind of expanded and expanded, became a full shot, uh, which actually was good enough for uh, becoming Nuke 606. And uh, so the general idea was just shooting a missile out of the sky. Um, but you know, I kind of took inspiration as well from things like Star Wars, where you're looking at uh, you know, maybe some of those meteor uh, sequences of Boba Fett in the original uh, Star Wars is where they're kind of going through and those explosions are happening. Um, you can also look at concept art and stuff like that, you know, to kind of build up your idea. Uh, but you still want to keep it original. So your composition, you want to keep it original. You know, you still want to design an original looking shot. Um, so what I did was with that general concept in mind, I came across a model of a landscape. So I was just looking at ArtStation and you can basically, you know, search for landscapes or environments. Uh, so this model was created by somebody and uh, this is a, the proxy model. So if I load the high resolution model real quick, uh, it will take a second because it's pretty heavy. But uh, generally I was like, well, if I start with a landscape, I can maybe f find an interesting camera angle in 3D. So let me just show you the model first. So I'll just disable the proxy model and I'll, I'll load in the high resolution model. And I know some of you guys probably don't have 3D experience, but I still want to explain this and then also uh, explain, you know, maybe if you don't have 3D experience uh, or if you have limited 3D experience, uh, just a general way that you can approach shots as well. But so yeah, this is kind of how I started. We have this kind of high resolution, uh, nice Canyon model. Uh, and this is the angle I chose, but actually the model is a 360 model. So if I kind of load the low res one, go around, uh, you can see, yeah, this is the model. I kind of cut it up and, and made a low resolution version in uh, Maya, but my Maya license expired now. So basically I'm working just in Blender. And yeah, the reason I use Blender as well for doing this is because Blender is a good software for kind of, uh, especially if you're doing your own projects because you can visualize lighting uh, relatively quickly using Eevee. Uh, so you can kind of get a general idea of the lighting much faster than if you're using Maya. And I think that's why a lot of people are using Blender now, especially like independent people or independent filmmakers. Um, but if I, if I kind of go around here, this is how I came up with the shot. I'm just kind of flying around and well, you know, if I switch this to Eevee here, give it a second. And it's going to give you kind of a, a general idea. I can, you know, you can kind of see how if you move your camera around, you can try to find some interesting compositions. So maybe this would have been another interesting composition where we could have had a ship coming here. Uh, maybe we would rotate the camera a little bit. And, you know, keeping basic uh, uh, photography rules in mind, you know, the rule of thirds and, um, you know, the direction that the ship is facing. So, for example, if we were doing this as our shot, and we, were, and we were kind of framing it like this, we wouldn't want uh, the ship to face, uh, let me do a draw over just to kind of explain this. So generally when you're coming up with a composition, you, you know, you have your basic, you know, rule of thirds. So you want your things to be uh, happening in an interesting location. So, you know, in these kind of spots. So that's kind of the very basic photography principle, which many of you already know. 
but you know it's it goes a little bit further it's like uh, photography if someone is in a camera so for example if you have a shot of a person you wouldn't if the person's in the rule of thirds here so let's say this is your person uh, you wouldn't want this person facing in this direction it just looks awkward and it's just pretty much a rule of photography so if the person is on the uh, right side of the frame you actually want them to be facing inward and that's just giving uh, a kind of a less awkward composition and it's kind of the same thing with the ship that we did so you know i have this the the final shot is like this big kind of ship and it's kind of crossing away in in uh, this direction but you know if we had a ship uh facing and it was kind of on the edge here and we had a ship and it was kind of facing this direction uh, and it was just on the very edge, it might look a little bit awkward. So you just wanna place your objects in a way that uh, they're not facing off the frame or kind of hanging off the frame or something like that. Uh, it really depends on what you're doing. There's no there's no uh, solid rules for this, but that's just the way I was thinking about it. And um, you know, I kinda wanted to have my ship uh, crossing the frame uh, in that direction. So the composition I came up with was kind of over in that spot. Uh, if I just move the camera here, and you can see how Eevee gives us a pretty nice example. If I disable the uh, proxy geo here, and this is the lighting that I played around with. I did a couple versions, and I'm going to show you guys uh, the versions and iterations I did for lighting. And lighting is a huge part of this. And uh, it's just going to make it easier to make your shot look better. If you have good lighting, it's, it's an important part. I know that... A lot of you guys are just taking this for only the compositing part, but um, one thing to understand with compositing and I guess learning in general, the advice that I kind of give people is to learn in a T. So what I mean by that is you learn like this and uh, compositing would be this really deep area. So you would learn, so let's say uh, this is compositing. So we have a C and then you could have uh, lighting, lighting and you could have um, let's just say 3D, 3D. So compositing, if you're if you're trying to focus on that spe specialty, you're going to spend most of your time focusing directly on that, um, and really deepen your knowledge in this thing. But to be a good compositor as well, it's good to kind of learn some adjacent skills. So you can learn a little bit of lighting, you can learn a little bit of 3D, and uh, you can learn a bit of photography. So you could put a photography. And maybe even photography is pretty important, so you learn a little bit more of that. So you spend most of your time deepening your knowledge here, but acquire these skills uh, in the adjacent, um, I guess, sort of domains. And uh, that's going to help you become a better compositor in the end. So that's, that's generally why I'm talking about this. And uh, it all ties together. Art, fundamentals, anything art related is going to make you a better artist and compositor. So, uh, yeah, so I'll talk more about the lighting and the lighting choices I made and, and the conscious decisions to uh, make them more cost effective while still making it look good and also with limited assets. So I'm, I'm going to make a, another lecture specifically about how to use kind of indie filmmaking techniques to kind of reduce your cost and still increase the quality of your shot, which is specific lighting choices you can make uh, to do that. Um, so one thing I thought about when I was planning the shot out as well is, um, you know, compositors live in the realm of the midground and the background. So uh, anything beyond the, uh, I guess, foreground parallax plane, if I kind of draw this out again, uh, let's see. So anything beyond this point, we can cheat it with 2D. So knowing that, I wanted to teach you know, CG compositing. I want to have as many elements of CG compositing as I can uh, into one shot. And that includes map painting. That includes you know, depth hazing and layering and level of detail and all the things we're going to talk about in this class. Uh, but one thing and the creative choice I made was to kind of work with a wider shot. And compositors have a lot of flexibility of the things they can do in the midground and for and and the midground and uh, background, um, because the parallax is kind of all in these further planes. There's less things overlapping, which means more things can be 2D. Meaning we don't need to model this in 3D. We don't need to have the city in 3D. None of these mountains need to be 
uh, completely 3D. We can use the model we have and just project on it. And uh, you're not going to notice a slight parallax shift or difference if the model is not completely accurate. Uh, and we also have the very uh, far background, which can be completely 2D if you want it. You could just paint it if you if you uh, have built those skills up. So that's why I kind of built it this way. We have uh, the scale of the scene, which allows us to have a lot of flexibility in Nuke and uh, kind of go more artistic. Um, so that's kind of the general premise of how I planned out the shot. Uh, we see here we have the rule of thirds kind of thing happening. We have the most interest happening on the edges of our frame. We also have uh, some composition choices uh, looking at the landscape uh, and the ship. You know, basically the ship is pointing in this direction. Uh, the landscape is pointing in this direction. And uh, we have this uh, pipe down here, which is also pointing in this direction. And why are we doing this? The reason we're doing this is because the action is going to be happening here. So we want to draw the viewer immediately, uh, which is probably going to first look here because it's the brightest thing. And then your eye is going to travel across, which to the next brightest thing, which is this little missile. So we're trying to direct the viewer using these kind of parallel lines across your scene uh, to kind of tell a story. And so that's a composition choice, it's an artistic choice. Uh, but those are things I'm trying to think about when I'm planning out a shot. And that's something I'm still improving at as well. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a compositor, but I'm also uh, a filmmaker. I'm directing my own CG film at the moment with some partners. And these are the kind of things that we're trying to prove at as well. But I figured I would put this into the, the class anyway just to explain it for those who may be interested. Um, so I'm not like a master at this. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone's a complete master. It's something you're always learning. Um, but I think it helps to to talk about, uh, especially, you know, from the artistic perspective here. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll look at more of the comp stuff now, the kind of breakdown study, uh, how I broke this, how this is broken up into different layers, and then we'll start looking through the script and move on to those lectures.